What's up, everybody? This is my uh, NFL defensive concept for a defensive center. This is the idea of a seven foot, six foot ten player playing uh, like a walked up linebacker. This is not safety. This is not defensive tackle. This is not a linebacker. This player is a counter to all the inefficiencies defenses have in the passing game. Before I really get started, I'm going to have a quick shout out to people with mathematics degrees and analytics degrees, people that have graduated from MIT that work in the NFL. There are five position groups on offense. If you put running backs and fullbacks together, quarterbacks, the other backs, linemen, tight ends, receivers. Defensive line, linebackers, defensive backs. You have three versus five, and the quarterback, you don't even have a counter to the quarterback. There is no position on the field. Don't give me Tyreek Hill. Don't give me CJ2K from 2008. Like, don't give me, don't give me some fast player that plays an offensive position that's not the passer and tell me he threatens every every inch of the field. Who threatens all the field is the quarterback. And nobody else does that. You have five position groups compared to three position groups. And everyone that's getting paid enough money to own their own house that works in the NFL to boil their big complicated math down to you haven't figured out the simple math. You haven't figured out the simple math of football. You have people that aren't football minded trying to figure out football things. And they won't figure it out with basketball answers. Because when I turn on the TV, whether it's I'm not going to put names to announcers, but Power forward, body out, basketball on grass. Those are just power forwards out there. Uh, they have a, That's low post basketball right there. It's hard to come around the body on the tight end. If you're as fast as the tight end, he's bigger than you. If you're as big as the tight end, he's faster than you. If you're as big and fast as him, how good are you at coverage? Are you going to be able to run man coverage? Are you going to be able to run zone coverage? Are you going to really have some six foot six, 250 pound guys? The answer, he can't run with them. The guy that can run with them isn't big enough. And the closer you are to the line of the scrimmage, or line of scrimmage, the more the more his size matters. Like the farther away his like his speed matters close, his size matters downfield, his size matters everywhere. It's tough to rock, paper, scissors counter a tight end. I believe with any position that you put out there and ask them to do it, they, they really can't do it. I believe there's about 30 kids that are Division I basketball players that play center, play power forward, and they're not going into the NBA. And I bet one or two of them plays basketball like a football player. They play like a linebacker. They're real physical, and they lack either the three-point shot or a far-range, mid-range jumper. They lack a basketball skill, but they're mean, they're big, they're tall, they're smart, and they knock shit out of the air, all right? I don't want him to play wide receiver, except for maybe one snap a game. Who's going to cover him? If you put him out there for one snap and he's seven foot tall and it's fourth and two and you know he can catch, who's going to cover him? The other team's left tackle? They're going to get Michael Beasley out there to cover him out into the flat or something like that? That's not going to work out. Flip side of that, you have him. Let's say you're at the goal line. And the team spreads you out. And they're like, well, you're not letting us run the ball. We're going to spread you out. And you get lighter. Well, now you've encouraged them to run because you're small. But imagine you're now, instead of going from, I'm going to keep them all the same height, six foot three, six foot three, 330, six foot three, 240, six foot three, 220. Defensive tackle, linebacker, uh, defensive back. As you're countering trying to put your personnel out there for defense you go through three different personnel groups more or less you have a lot of positions you can say there's 11 positions but there's only three positional groups you're gonna say all oh, the defensive tackles and the dns i already put fullbacks and running backs together an offensive line has five different positions in that group not four not three not two five if you want to say three and then two other ones that match two of the previous three, it's three. You can't really get effectively to more position groups or the same amount of position groups for this concept I'm working on defense without adding a new athlete. And I wouldn't take a shot at the defense for not having this athlete if I didn't think this athlete could perform. I think you can find someone that's seven foot tall, 
270 pounds, 260 pounds. I think by the time you have his cleats spatted, his knees braced, and you pat him up a little bit like a lower body hockey player, like a goalie, and you teach him how to take on blocks, you're teaching 5'11", 190 pound players to take on blocks. And you can say they've taken on blocks their whole careers, but I do not expect a seven foot tall guy in full pads who's like a mean player to be intimidated on the football field. I don't expect this player to one necessarily roll in his first year. I think a little bit of what I call the Foxborough flu may be beneficial to this player. I think he can play 15, 20 snaps a game. And I think what he's doing is he's playing quarterback spy on the Y axis, not the X axis. When you look at zone defenses or any play of offense and defense, when it shows the routes of a wide receiver, there's not some arch that comes off of the page and into a three-dimensional surface. It has to be a three-dimensional presentation for you to observe that. Zone defense is represented two-dimensionally. I drew these earlier. Let's see of zones. See how wide this zone is across here? I'm not saying this is some great zone defense. You see how wide this is here? Quarterback has 180 degrees before his pass is not a pass. This pizza slice from the quarterback to this zone is what a zone takes away underneath. This quarterback, and you have a defensive center right here, he's not playing zone like this. This circle is up in the air. It's this line right here. You can't even represent what he has to do on the page in any real sort of way that any responsibility and football has been represented. Unless you're telling a defensive tackle to do what I'm saying you should bring in a position to do. And the inspiration for this is J.J. Swat. You're giving first-team All-Pro to Khalil Mack twice. And I would give first-team All-Pro to J.J. Watt three times. I would have gave him defensive tackle, defensive end, and safety. I would have said he had more pass deflections than almost every defensive back in football. And he had him right in front of the quarterback's face. It was, the best, it was the best thing I've ever seen on defense. And that's a six foot four, six foot five guy who was trying to get underneath you to push you up. These are people that have to like transition what they're doing, get stood up, watch the quarterback size, and then get a hand up. And they're six foot five, six foot six, six foot three. They're not seven feet tall people. They haven't been knocking shit out of the sky for a living their whole life. You're trying to say, oh, this kid can't tackle. You don't have a pass blocker. I don't mean like a pass blocker like a left tackle. I mean like someone that like swats the ball down. You don't have someone that's blocking shots out of the air in football like you do in basketball. And I think you could find this kid, bring him in, swat shit out of the air, teach him how to take blocks, teach him how to tackle, bring him in on the right scenarios, I don't think you're leaving a six foot three, 350 pound guy on the field on third and seven. I don't, I don't think that you're, I think when they spread you out and you bring on like defensive backs and stuff at the goal line to stop the pass. I don't think that's super smart either. It's what teams have to do. Certain teams do it smarter than other teams, but instead of getting smaller to combat the pass, imagine if you got taller. That the short pass, they're putting tight ends between linebacker and safety zones. They're teaching them when to sit down, when to run through the second window. And quarterbacks, most passes, I doubt that the apex of the trajectory are ever more than like eight, nine feet off the ground. This is a person that's knocking stuff that gets 11, 12 feet up in the air out of the air. This is a person that can jump. And SWAT, his arms are longer, his legs are longer. He's he's built for this. And I don't want him to play wide receiver 30 snaps a game. I'm not asking you if LeBron James can play wide receiver. I'm not asking you if LeBron James can play defensive end or tight end. I'm saying that a shot blocker in basketball could be a pass swatter in football. And they are currently not. That's what I'm trying to say. One player lined up somewhere over the center to the tackle, you build his responsibilities into the zone concept, into the man concept. You could run man, have him represent a defensive tackle, 
and then have kind of like an inside zone to clog up the middle. You don't necessarily have to run a shallow zone behind them. You can run shallow zones to the side of them. Where are the counters to this? One, I'm going to counter the counters and say defenses are disadvantaged by the rules. They are disadvantaged by having less variety and then you don't have enough position groups. You're not complex enough on the defensive side of the ball to be consistently better than the offense. I believe this player can come in, play 15, 20 snaps a game in third down situations, passing situations. I think he can play safety on Hail Mary situations. I think he can play like receiver at the goal line. I think he can play wing on field goal and PAT. I think this player, a mean, tough, physical basketball player, can come into the NFL. They're not going to do it in college. A guy that's seven foot tall is not – he's not 19 and moonlighting with the football team. He's not doing that. He's not moonlighting with the football team. Until basketball is over – until amateur basketball is over and professional basketball is like Greece or go be a computer analyst, I believe one of those players, if given the opportunity, would go play in the NFL. I don't, I'm not saying the first one makes it. I'm not saying the second one makes it. I'm not saying, listen, I think there's 31 teams that don't haven't figured out what the Patriots have figured out. There's 31 teams trying to chase what Bill Belichick is, and they haven't figured it out. So, like, I'm not saying your team is going to know what to do with this guy when I don't think they know what to do with some of the positions that have been around since the beginning of football. I don't. I don't. I think the seven-foot-tall player can come in, step up, step up, put his hand here. I think the seven foot tall player can come in, come in, keep his eyes up, track, 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 and swap. I think he can play like this, keep his eyes on the quarterback, have a range of room that he's responsible for, and be an actual player. I don't, I'm not talking about bringing some soft three point shooting seven foot tall guy out there that doesn't have any defensive motor that doesn't have any aggression. I think you have to find a player that you first believe resembles a football attitude and you find him and see if he'll do it. If he doesn't have the NBA in front of his face, he just might do it. I'm going to make this really quick to, I would love to work in football. When I say like, Hey, MIT guys, there's, five offensive positions and three defensive positions. I have a lot more to say than defensive centers and trying to find a seven foot tall player. I think I, I could talk to you about why I think defensive ends should commit more defensive holding. I think they should put their back to the line judge. I think they should put the offensive tackles back to the referee. And I think they should grab their outside wrist. And then that offensive tackle has no, real training on what to do if someone grabs them because it's illegal. You get flagged for it. But if you're smart and you had a veteran do it, you may not get seen in the right time of the game. Another thing, if you have to double team, like Vince Wilfork was a hoss. And if you have a center, if you had someone next to me, and me and the center have to double team Vince Wilfork, guess what? We can't do it. We can't do it. So we have to we have to do it together. So what would happen? Uh, I tried to call this idea of a seven-foot tall player into the Pat McAfee show. So I'll keep a little friendliness that way. What would happen if A.J. Hawk and B.J. Raji ever double-teamed an offensive guard on third and seven? Like, instead of blitzing through the A-gap and rushing through the B-gap, we're just going to blitz right through the guard. What's going to happen? I'd be interested to see how teams adjust to that because it's not fundamental defense to it for two defenders to attack one guy. Every film in high school where a guard blocks one guy and then blocks another guy or anyone's block accounts for two defenders, that's a highlight. They talk about that. That's a round of applause. So I don't know 
I know it's not good to always do that, but if you situationally applied the real aspects of blitzkrieg, the blitzing, I would send two guys through one guy. I think that is more so what blitzing is than I'm going to send five guys on a side of three and I'm going to overload your edge. Like blitzing is about penetrating your front. Like it's, you know, it's, I, I, I would once or twice a game unless they change the rules. And I don't know how that would apply to like goal line situations, like third and one on the goal line or, uh, field goal, like block or something like that. I don't know how they would regulate that, but I don't think guards can handle it. I think teams could try to scheme around it, but I think the first time a team saw it, that fucked their day up. Oh, so here's another one. The green dot, back of the helmet, that's a game rule. That Paul Brown innovation, it's a game rule. Game rule. It's a game rule. Your quarterback, your linebacker, one player. I would put I put radio helmets in all sorts of practice helmets. If I if I had players that were coming up off of the practice squad, I'd want to be in their air before the play, during the play, after the play. And coaches are they just have to scream at the guy from the sideline, or even in practice, you're doing some kind of team session. The coaches are closer to the offensive play than they than they are in a game, but. Imagine a wide receiver is 20 yards downfield and the, and the quarterback's staring him down and he hasn't turned around for the ball yet. I, I put radios in practice helmets. I have football sled ideas. I have a whole bunch of ideas. But this is my video on uh, seven-foot-tall players. And I'm not – this is not the traditional kind of basketball player play football. I'm not asking him to do football things. 100% of the, I'm not asking him to quit being a basketball player. I'm asking him to learn a couple football things and continue being a basketball player. I think a defensive center puts out a greater percentage of the potential passing trajectory. Defensive backs, they are anyone. You either cover the end point of the pass trajectory or you rush the beginning point of the pass trajectory. Alter it or to deny, to deny it. I want to cover the beginning point of the pass trajectory. If you have this zone here, this right here is the same width as this right here. But look how this chokes out the space compared to that. You could throw a drag underneath that wide receiver. You can, you can do play action. You put a wide receiver over the back side of a linebacker. But... The counters to this position, like, oh, they're just going to throw to the outside. They're just going to run a draw. They're just going to run a screen. That's already their answers. You're, you're talking about a new way that you force them to seek out new answers. There is no, like, oh, they're just going to run a draw on you. They're going to do that while you're on dime personnel on third and five when they put you in dime personnel. they run the football on you. They're already doing that to you. That's a loser's mentality, to be honest with you. I'm not – from someone who planned most of their life to potentially be a head football coach for someone that was ran out of college for protecting my teammates. Uh, I'm not super impressed with like the young hotshot coaches. The one that I'm the most impressed with is probably Kyle Shanahan, but the Trey Lance thing is just mind boggling to me. So when it comes to like winning football, you have to basically be better in every single aspect of what the Patriots do, or you may potentially be playing winning football. You may be the best team that year, but consistently year in and year out, are you focusing on compensatory draft picks? Are you trading well, drafting well, free agency, free agency well? Are you training your players, coaching your players, calling the plays right? Is the atmosphere, the energy, the attitudes in the locker room right? There's a thousand and one ways to lose a football game. And sometimes it involves trading two first-round picks for a quarterback that will never be better than the quarterback you already have. And that's, uh, oh, is it the year 2025 already? I didn't mean to throw hindsight at you like four years early, but – I'm concerned for the jobs of like Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan or like their general managers. What's employable about trading of two first round picks for a safety? 
I mean, that's what the Seahawks did. But I mean, like the Niners, what's like, I don't think Trey Lance is better than Justin Fields. And I don't think he's better than Mac Jones. I think he may be better than Zach Wilson, but I would have not drafted. At, at a certain point, I'm looking at Davis Mills because if I were in this draft, I don't want Trevor Lawrence over Mac Jones unless I've told myself that we need a quarterback right now, even though we can't block for him right now, all of the Bengals from last year. I wouldn't want to do any of that nonsense. I would want the most accurate, most thoughtful, most intelligent quarterback, and everything else is a lack of talent. You run a 4-5, you're not talented. You can throw 70 yards through the air, you're not talented. All you do is make the smart decision and complete passes, you're talented. So I'm not like super impressed with everything I see in the NFL as someone who's not in the NFL. I don't think I know football better than Kyle Shanahan. I don't think I know football better than Sean McVay. Would I ever build a team how Les Snead builds a team? Hell no. Uh, and I'm not to not to blank on him. He's a great player, and I just I just blanked on his name. The general manager for the Niners. I wouldn't have done Trey Lance. I wouldn't have traded for Jamal Adams. As far as I can see, almost every single team on that whole coast doesn't know what to do. Like the like the like the Chargers. You you draft the best rookie ever. You draft a rookie that outplayed Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson. You have a rookie that outplayed Roethlisberger and Dak Prescott. You have that guy. You have that guy. And you know what? You fire the coach. And you know what? Chargers aren't better this year. The Chargers are not better coached this year than they were last year. Like every team on the West Coast has some aspect of, I'm not going to say you don't know what you're doing, but doesn't matter if you do because what you did was stupid i would say oh john lynch i would sit down right like if i was gonna have an interview with john lynch i'd have to ask him trey lance why like why like you're like i'd need to figure out how far away how that program saw things to how far i saw things to ever want to put my need of them in them because you can't get me to accept certain things. Like you could put a gun to my head. You could put a gun to my head. I'm not going to think something I don't think. I'll do something someone wants me to do. I'll coach a technique someone wanted me to coach or something. But I don't know what these teams are doing. I don't know what these teams are doing. Like if I were the Jets, I wouldn't have drafted Zach Wilson. Like the only reason the Jaguars can draft Trevor Lawrence on any merit over Zach Wilson or, or over Mac Jones is that Mac Jones doesn't have the athleticism to survive in a situation where we have no goddamn business even drafting a quarterback yet. Like, that's it. That's it. That's the only precursor to pass on the most accurate championed quarterback of collegiate football history. That's the only reason to pass on him is because you don't think he's athletic enough to survive in your shit show. That's it. Like, look at Joe Burrow. Last year, first overall, Joe Burrow. And then what, what did uh, Enkeel Harry go? You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather have Enkeel Harry that's done not a whole lot and Mac Jones at 15 than to have drafted Joe Burrow at one. He gets injured because you weren't prepared to have a quarterback. You, weren't, you, you were undeserving. You were deserving of the first overall pick. You are unworthy to use it to draft a quarterback that uh, you, you you had no scenario for him to succeed and that's what the Colts did to Andrew Locke that's what the Colts did to Peyton Manning and fuck they're lucky that worked for Peyton Manning because it doesn't really work for anyone it's a it's a bad way to go like you like Marino did it Elway survived a lot of them don't a lot of them don't. And the ones that do, some of them look good for four or five years, sign another contract, play two or three years. They're not the guy. And the next thing you know, Andy Dalton's on the Bears. Like, that's none of that's anything that I want to do. I'm not trying to sell tickets. I would tell my fans, like, we didn't have a championship quarterback last year. I liked this guy in the draft. I liked this guy in the draft. We didn't have access to him. 
And, uh, you know, we're, we, we built as competitive a team as we can this year. And, you know, we're, we're going to be looking for a quarterback. I wouldn't, I don't care about wide receivers. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care about flashy first round players. Like I'd rather have Mac Jones at 15 behind an offensive line that was ready for him than Joe Burrow at one with no offensive line. It doesn't make sense to me. So if I were to ever work in football, you got to be, you got operate in a certain type of way for me to not like have to like want to beat my head against the wall like for all for everything i just said that'd be as frustrating as someone's like uh tony put box on shelf please tony put box on shelf please like that i wouldn't want to be in that environment i'm i'm really tired of dumb environments i personally wish every single human on this planet spent almost all of their spare time trying to be smarter than they were five minutes ago. That is not what's happening in the world. I can't do much about that, but I don't know what's happening in football. Put a seven foot tall player out there, get more creative on defense involving things that you've never done on defense. So like, so like, how about that? Like we, we get a slot corner. The slot receivers are like a decade behind and you've never even fixed your answer to tight end. I don't know what's going on out there. Like, I, I don't get it. You want to pay Jalen Ramsey $20 million a year, and the Patriots can pay Jalen Mills, what, seven or 10? He sets the edge. He comes up and pounds tight ends. Jalen Mills comes up and, like, like squares the tight end at, like, 5'9". Why would I want to go pay $20 million for Jalen Ramsey? Why would I trade two first-round draft picks for someone with a bad attitude Store talent, and he's really just one of the top 20 guys. And it's and it's like, I don't want him for that dollar amount. I don't know. Seven-foot-tall players, not that impressed with what the NFL is doing. I've, I've had this mindset. Well, one of the top three coaches in football, in my opinion, is uh, John Harbaugh. But, like, these ideas of innovation, they come from a game in part where John Harbaugh completely had no idea what was going on. The 2014 Patriots in the playoffs, their players were smarter than every single person in the Ravens organization. Their players understood the rule book better than the general manager and the coaches and players of the other team. That their players could have coached the other players better than those other players' coaches did. Real innovation, like Paul Brown innovation, isn't out there. Like the green dot. Put multiple radios and helmets at practice. I'm not saying that's helping you practice to call plays, but it's practice. Like, I, I, there's a lot of things. I have more ideas than this. I have, like, patentable, like, football equipment. I would change how on-field football training implements are used. I don't, I don't like them. There's a lot of things I'd change about football. First is I'd put a seven foot tall player out there that's a mean some bitch and knock some passes out of the air while most of these quarterbacks are getting shorter and their passes are getting shorter and receivers already, downfield receivers, most of them can't track the ball over their shoulder. Most of them can't they have to turn around and do this. Like everyone in modern football are losing the little nuances that their positions had twenty years ago. Hey, you know, and think about this. They change the rules every year. As you require teams to relearn information, the teams that are the smartest gain the greatest advantage with the more changes the league implements. And if you just understood what I just rattled off, who is that? That's the Patriots that every single year, the NFL makes it harder to follow the rules. And the smarter your football team is, the better off they are. That's it. Smart players, smart coaching, smart general managing. I don't know why it's so difficult. I guess tickets are really important and you're really afraid to not have stars on your team because you won't sell tickets. I don't know. Patriots sell a lot of tickets. You know, Patriots sell a lot of tickets. The only, the only like the Cowboys sell more tickets. They have a hundred thousand person stadium, and the Patriots have like a sixty eight thousand person stadium. But someone with a sixty eight thousand person stadium is not outselling the Patriots because they have Jamar Chase or they have Odell Beckham Jr. 
I just redid this video and listed off the stars for the Rams. I forgot OBJ was on there. I don't consider him a star. He's not a star player. He's not even Victor Cruz to me. He's one fancy catch, one good season, half a good season, and a whole bunch of attitudinal issues since then. I'd rather have his college teammate that's on the Browns. I'd rather have Jacoby Myers. You couldn't, if you told me I had to keep Jacoby Myers at the exact same dollar cost of Odell Beckham Jr., I'd still pick Jacoby Myers. I'm not picking Odell Beckham Jr. over a whole bunch of receivers because he's not a leader. He's not a leader. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't need him. I need leaders. I need smart guys. I need smart football. Seven foot tall players. Shout out to the Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee shows where I try to air this seven foot tall player idea, and I had bad signal. They cut me off. It was bad YouTube, radio, TV. They cut me off. That was a fair move. Shout out to the boys. Uh, Boston Connor, seven is heaven. Go Pats. Go Pat. Go AJ. Go boys. Uh, this is football frequency. And I'm going to be talking about football here and there. Thank you.